Um, so I'm very pleased to introduce our speaker this morning, uh, Alicia Delion, who is our candidate for the youth pastor position at Greenfield. Uh, she is here with the unanimous recommendation of the search committee, as well as a unanimous uh, recommendation of the ministry council. And so we are presenting her to you as a candidate for this position. Um, now we know Alicia, right? We've seen her around Greenfield, serving in various roles since at least 2018, um, and mostly focused on youth. So she's been a youth leader. Well, she was in, she started out in the youth group, and then she was a youth leader, a youth intern, a summer worker, which she did various things like paint my office and, and uh, wash my car. No, she didn't wash my car, she did. She, I asked her, but she said no. But she did paint my office. Um, and then she's also been, more recently, uh, an assistant to the youth pastor. And then this year is pastoral intern. So she is, uh, how, how do you say, she's kind of came up within the system. Uh, or that's, you know, like, kind of like, uh, well, I won't say bring in the Oilers here, but um, <clears throat> now during this whole time, she also graduated with a youth ministry certificate from Vanguard College in 2019, and then in 2022, she finished a Bachelor of Arts in Theology from the King's University, and this Bachelor of Arts in Theology was with honors with distinction, okay, so... Um, And I've had her in a couple classes there, and yeah, two thumbs up in terms of starts. And so, but, but even more than all of this, that she uh, loves Jesus. She loves our Lord, and she um, has a passion for youth ministry and, and working with youth and reaching out to youth. And so this morning, she's going to share a, a bit about herself and her passion for youth ministry and a little bit of her kind of philosophy of youth ministry and and, and whatnot. So, and then after the service, um, when we go downstairs for Soup Sunday, um, after sort of, you know, once everyone has their chili, um, we're going to do a little question and answer time with Alicia, where you'll have the opportunity to text uh, questions that uh, we can ask her in that process as well. So more information will be shared downstairs about that. So Alicia, please come up now, and I'd like to pray for you. Uh, this morning. Hi. Hi. Nervous? We can do that yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's pray together. So, Lord, I just thank you for Alicia. I thank you for how you have um, created her, how, how her sh experiences have shaped her to be the, the young woman that she is. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the, how you've gifted her and given her this passion. Uh, to work with youth. And, and Lord, I just pray that you would calm her heart, that you would just give her a clarity that you would be able to express, that so we would get a, some insight into her, her love for you and her love uh, for your people, uh, especially with youth ministry this morning. And so, Lord, I just pray that uh, you would bless her as she speaks, and Lord, give us all uh, discernment and, and, and ears to hear uh, and soft hearts to to obey. And so, Lord, we thank you for this time, and just we pray all this in, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Whenever you do introductions of me, you, like, preach half my sermon for me, so thanks for that. <laughs> uh, a little bit, a little bit longer. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am very excited to be here with you all this morning. Honestly, I am a bit shocked, um, in the best way possible, that I get to stand before you and candidate for youth pastor here. Um, I am so thrilled and excited and have felt so blessed this far in the process and can't wait to share with you all my heart and passion for youth ministry this morning. Now, before I jump into the main purpose of our time together this morning, I wanted to start this time with just a solid introduction of myself. Some of you may already know me quite well. And given that I've worked here for, at Greenfield for four and a bit years, and have attended here for eight, I'd hope that that would be the case. That some of you know me well, as I know some of you very well. But I also know that a lot of the work I do is behind the scenes, or for certain areas in our church ministries, and that not everyone here or online knows all there is to know about me. So I want to share with you all, 
and show you all some fun or interesting details of my life of who I am and how I even got to Greenfield in the first place. So let's start out with a softball. I am married. I got married to Cullen on November 12th this past year. We had a very small 30-person wedding with close family and friends, and it was everything I wanted and more. Art Delion cooked the food, delicious. Jim Hall did the ceremony, and I got to marry my best friend. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I profoundly love Cullen's heart for the youth here at Greenfields, and I'm excited to be able to have him beside me as I take these next steps in ministry. Now, another fact to know about me is that I adore animals, especially fuzzy ones. I have all of my life, and so much so that when I was in junior high, my parents finally caved and let me get a dog. So I have had this husky, Levi, for nine years. I got him from the SPCA when he was three months old, and he now lives with Cullen and I in Sweetgrass. Now, given that Cullen shares this absolute love for animals, dogs especially, after we got married and Levi and I settled into the house, we just had to adopt another dog. So this is Hannah. She is six years old and is a very lovely addition to our family, and she is settling in quite well. Now, a fact about me that you may not know Although if you've been around for any of the kids' camps in the past couple of years here, you'd maybe be able to guess what it is, is that I love to be creative and I love making things with my hands. Decorating for kids' camp is a task I continually want on my plate. And Tyler, you can hold me to that, okay? I will take it over painting bland beige walls any day, okay? <laughs> Including your office. I think it is so, so fascinating that God gives us the capacity to participate in creating with him. Now, I don't know if he had cardboard animals in mind uh, when he gave us this ability, or life-size Oscar the Grouch costumes, for that matter, but I love being able to work with different mediums to make and shape and form things into art, if you consider that art. And I love over the years, I have explored so many different ways to create, and I continually love and find joy in creating things. Now, I also love being active. I have always loved sports and movement and running after people and chasing flying objects. Yes, that is right. You may end up with yet another youth pastor who absolutely loves Ultimate Frisbee and will play it any chance they get. You can actually thank Chris for introducing me to the sport when I started coming to youth here in grade 10. I love sports and being active and playing all of the fun games. Now, one more fact about me is that I didn't actually grow up in this church, per se. Some of you who have been here for generations would know this, but for those of you who are newer, I only started attending Greenfields when I was in grade 9. And I didn't go to youth group here until my grade 10 year. My dad is a pastor. And so I grew up going to a church he planted with Jim Hall when I was a small, small kid. The Canopy. It was this church that met in the basement of a radio station building, and it was the first real community of faith I felt I belonged to. It was my parents' church, literally, but more than that, it was my church. I felt cared for there, and loved, and welcomed, and I saw my friends and could run around and play with them. I could dance during the worship, or wave ribbons and flags, or paint, and I could ask all the questions and explore what it meant for me to follow Jesus. The canopy was my first real understanding of the importance of church community and when I started to value my faith and relationship with God. Now when the canopy closed, so did my connection to that community. And for the next handful of years, my parents and my brother and I would go to different churches in the city where we could potentially plant our roots again. But that meant that for those handful of years, my roots weren't being planted anywhere solid. It wasn't until grade nine for me, on what my family thought was a random Sunday morning, that we decided to try out the church that was right in our physical community. So we got ready and walked over to this church. Came through those doors, found an empty orange pew right over there, and proceeded to sit through a service dedicated to Pastor Stefano Piva's last day at Greenfield. <laughs> Afterwards, after the service, my parents came to the agreement that we might as well stick it out here and see what other pastor walks through those doors. At least we'd be in the same boat as whoever it was, being brand new to the church. And so we stayed. 
Now, as I moved into grade 10, I got connected into the youth group here. I started making connections, started running around the building with friends, started dancing and doing actions in the services again with some of them. And I began to feel like I belonged in this community, like I had at the Canopy. And then my dad got a job at a church again. My dad became senior pastor at Strathcona Baptist Church down on White Ave, and him and my mom started attending there. In this whole shift of churches again, my parents truly gave me an opportunity to make a choice for myself. And I am so thankful that they recognized the value of church community and developed relationships in this type of setting. At Strathcona, there were no kids my age. There were no youth group or pastor of youth or anyone even remotely close to the same stage of life as I was in. And so my parents told me that if I wanted to, if I could get myself up and ready for church on my own, that I could stay at Greenfield in the community I had already started to form. My parents knew the value of having a community of peers in a church context, and they allowed me to make a choice on my own to stay in this community here. And obviously that choice I made is stay, still playing out in my life. God has given me numerous opportunities and people in my life who have supported and encouraged me here at Greenfields, which I am so thankful for. I have found some of my closest friends here, been given the opportunity to have amazing mentors and coworkers, and even marry a pretty great guy from this community. God has used Greenfield in my life to build me up and open doors for me that I never would have anticipated when I first chose to stay here. And he has used Greenfield to grow my love for youth and the value that I see being a part of such a community holds in one's faith journey and developmental years. Now, once I graduated from youth here, I started on the very fun journey of trying to figure out what my calling and future plans were going to be. Now, disclaimer, I would say that God has never spoken to me in a way that was like the heavens opening up and there being this clear audible voice yelling, you're going to be a pastor. Or that he ever gave me a solid one time crucial moment in my life where it was so clearly God telling me, writing in the skies, that I'm called to ministry. I will, however, say that God tends to use people around me, close friends and family, to motivate me to open doors and encourage me in clearly God-spoken ways to pursue ministry. I've tried the former. I've tried waiting for the right door to open in my favor and waiting for God to just give me that nudge in any direction. But he speaks to me more subtly than that. And I think for him, it's a way to get me moving and interested in something first before he makes it clear that this is what I'm called to. Now, my second year out of high school, having done nothing with my past year, I worked out at Camp Caroline for the summer and then went on to attend Vanguard Bible College for the school year. In both cases, I had to make the conscious decision to stick it out and finish both the summer and the school year because in both cases, I struggled to find connections with the staff and peers. However, in both cases, I walked away with a deep appreciation and love for the work I had done with the teens I interacted with. At camp, I uncovered my desire to make sure the outsider was included in activities and that every teen walked away at the end of each week feeling as though they belonged and that they knew that their leaders loved them because God loved them. And at Vanguard, I found my deep appreciation to learn and grow in my faith and in theological understanding, but also that youth ministry was the area of ministry I found the most joy in. We had a practicum class where we would go to new youth groups at different churches each week and lead an evening of worship and Bible study and games. And every week, even though I was quiet and shy in class discussions or wasn't even super talkative with my peers, I would give all of my energy to these random youth groups we were visiting because just being in that environment filled me with joy and excitement. God made it clear to me that this was what he had called me to to be involved in youth ministry and invested in the lives of teens continually. Now, while I was doing schooling at Vanguard for a year and then at King's, I was also, as most of you may be aware, given the opportunity to intern part-time here at Greenfield under Chris. It was definitely a dream of mine once I started working here to be at Greenfield long-term. I love this community and the staff dynamics that we have and the absolute care and love that we all share for one another. And I've learned so much about what it looks like to be a relational youth pastor working with Chris in youth ministry. 
Throughout the time I've al already been able to work here, I have just been constantly supported in my calling to be a youth pastor. It's honestly so surreal to be able to candidate for this position today here at this church that my parents decided to stick out and that I had the opportunity to choose continually to be a part of. Now speaking of actually candidating, this morning I want to outline my hopeful plan and what I believe is the purpose of youth ministry. And really, given that I have experienced Greenfield youth firsthand in high school, have been trained by and worked with Chris for four plus years, what I'm about to say aligns already, not only with what Chris does and how he runs things, but I'd also suggest that it aligns greatly with the vision of Greenfield as a whole already. We at Greenfield strive to love God, love others, and love our neighbors. And I personally, as I continue in youth here and develop and uphold what is in place, I want to clearly have these ideas be, ground, be the, what grounds my youth ministry. There are two words that stem from loving God, loving others and loving our neighbors, that I want to structure everything I do in youth ministry around. And they are the words foundational and relational. Now let me break, us down, break, break that down for us. The first word is foundational. It actually comes from a sermon illustration that I heard way back at camp, and the speaker talked about how some campers come to camp and have a great time and learn lots, and at the end of the week, they're on this mountaintop high with Jesus, and everything is sunshine and rainbows. But as they go back to regular life, they can only move down. Their passion and desire to know God and be close to God fades. And that once excitement and high now becomes a long trek down the, the mountain back into everyday routine. But what camp should be about is helping kids build a foundation for their faith. That camp should be a place where kids are given tools and a basis of faith that they can take away from camp and work to only grow up from their time there. In a very similar light, I want youth ministry to be formatted in a way that allows our youth to be able to build solid foundations for their faith. To give them the ability to build a foundational faith. So that when they graduate, when they leave the structure of weekly Tuesday and Friday events, when they go to different universities or work in public settings or move cities, that what they've learned at youth has built in them tools and confidence for a solid foundation for their faith to rest on. If we, as a broader church, are holding our love for God as a top value and statement in all that we do and say, I want to be able to instill that love for God in tangible and practical ways for our teens, so that they have the words and the knowledge and the decision-making skills to follow Jesus outside of youth ministry and love God with their whole being. Youth ministry, I think, can sometimes reflect camp's experience of this mountaintop high, of six years packed full of fun games and good friends. But if there's no solid foundation in which youth's faith is built upon, when they leave those six years of youth, the only movement of their passion and faith and desire to know God is down the mountain. It's away from the community that no longer fits their life. And ultimately, it can be away from God. And so I want to be focused on creating foundations for youth to have, created from their faith and on who and what God tells them they are. Now in this foundational faith, I hope to instill in the youth a sense of purpose and identity in Christ and a desire to grow and learn in their faith. A lot of times I think youth ministry can fall into this trend of becoming a place where fun is had and discussions are light and airy. And fun is great, don't get me wrong, we will have plenty of fun. But there is also such a deep opportunity to allow a space for youth to ask hard questions and struggle with doubts and work through differing ideas and perspectives of theology and of what it means to follow Jesus for them. There is so much value in creating a safe and welcoming environment for youth to feel it's okay to wrestle with their faith. And youth are seeking this space. When my family was moving from church to church when I was in junior high, I had so many questions about faith and about God, but I didn't think I had the safe space to ask them. But I want to be able to give that now to the youth ministry that I run and allow for that space for questions to be freely asked from the youth. Now, questions are great, and theology is so good to talk about, and foundational faith is needed. 
But what I think sometimes youth long for even more than that is connection. Being in relational community with one another. And that is the second word that forms and guides all I want to do and hope to achieve in youth ministry. The word relational. Youth desire relational connection. They want to be known. They want to be seen and they want to be heard. And I want to create a space for them to explore who they are and what it means to be a Jesus follower in a place that allows for them to build friendships with peers and leaders. When relationships are built, faith conversations can actually take place. When youth feel welcomed and safe and included in games and activities, when they feel heard and valued because the leaders around them actually care and want to know them, faith conversations are able to take shape and faith development can flourish. So to be able to even consider building foundations of faith in youth, we first have to build relationships with them. The next two phrases in our church's mission statement is to love others and love our neighbors. Now I'd like to suggest that youth fit into both of those categories. They clearly make up some of us as a church community. There's some youth right now sitting in this sanctuary and we are called to love them Some youth have grown up in this church family, and we are called to spend time with them and disciple them and walk alongside them. All of us are. But youth can also be our neighbors. We have had, at Greenfield, friends of youth kids come on Friday nights who go to the same schools or on the same sports teams or in some same clubs. We've even had kids come to youth who just live in the Greenfield area and don't know a single person here. Some have recently moved here, or maybe their parents want them connected in somewhere. And when that happens, my focus first and foremost is on building a relationship with them, making a connection with them so that they feel seen and heard and welcomed. Youth desire relational connections, and they clearly come to youth with the intention to seek that out. And so I want my youth ministry to be a place that fosters that connection, that fosters those relationships and that allows for every kid who walks through our doors to feel seen and welcomed and known. Now I've seen firsthand that the youth pastor can't do that alone. It is a team effort to connect with kids who come to youth and when more leaders and more adults are on board with seeking out connections, the more likely youth are to stick around. The very first sermon I preached here was about building a community that is intergenerational. And I stick by what I said. We as a body of Christ are called to be intentionally intergenerational. And when we focus on that, it can show so much fruit when it's integrated into youth ministry. I know for a fact that any youth pastor would struggle to run a youth ministry all by themselves. Lesson Cheryl didn't do it alone. Chris doesn't do it alone. And I have no intention of doing it alone. The value of youth ministry is found in the diverse and intergenerational voices that are being spoken into the lives of the youth. When relationships are being built across generations, when there are young and old adults speaking into the youth ministry, and when there there is intentional connections being made that span the youth ministry and broader church gap, youth are more likely to stick around and they are more likely to seek out deeper connections with others and their faith. I'd suggest that it's so important to build a team of leaders around the youth pastor who all have a heart and passion for connecting with youth that are of all generations. There is value in having different and unique voices and perspectives being shared with our youth because this just adds to the building up of a solid foundation of faith for them. When they are exposed to different testimonies and life experiences, when they can seek out advice from those who have experienced similar things, Youth are able to build stronger relationships and in turn are more engaged to listen when adults share about their faith. I see so much value in having intergenerational relationships in youth and I want to strive to continue to develop that here. Now to conclude, if I could leave you with one last statement to tie this all together and as abrupt as this might seem, ultimately the youth ministry I envision is a place where kids are welcomed, where they are seen and heard and loved by their peers and by adults of all generations. 
and where they can grow in their knowledge and love for God and for the God who loves them. Thank you for your time this morning.